Hey, and welcome back to my channel. And today we were talking about ketosis, keto diet, and uh, intermittent fasting and why you shouldn't do it. We are reacting today to uh, Dr. Berg, a very successful YouTuber, doctor of chiropractic. And his signature move is proposing the keto diet and intermittent fasting for weight loss. And today we will expose some of his lies. Uh, so let's start. This is why you're not losing weight. Now, of course, the obvious reasons why people can't lose weight are they're eating too much food, or maybe they're just a couch potato. Yeah, full stop. He could have made a 10 second video that would explain everything. You're eating too much and you're eating the wrong foods and you're not staying in the calorie deficit. Your diet might be shit. And that's why you don't lose weight. And that's why most people don't lose weight. That's why I haven't lost weight. That is also why I'm writing this book to teach you how to gradually replace your diet with healthier options. And then you keep your weight off for good for the rest of your life. Those are the obvious things. And then you also have people who are on a healthy version of the ketogenic diet to doing intermittent fasting and even they plateau so here we go so i made videos before intermittent fasting so i'm just going to do this very quick in short intermittent fasting will work short time or might work short time because you're eating less calories than you than you burn but it is not as sustainable and has been shown without a doubt if you do intermittent fasting for a very long time especially if your routine incre includes skipping breakfast your harm to your health will be significant. But what about the ketogenic diet? For that, we should probably first explore what ketosis actually is. So ketosis usually happens when there's a condition where you have low blood glucose availability, so blood sugar levels are low, and you have a low level of insulin available. So, and that will usually increase the flux of fat, fatty acids from your fat depots, from your visceral fat usually. So those fatty acids are usually oxidized in the liver where they produce a enzyme which is called acetyl-CoA, and then which turns into uh, TCA and then TCA turns into ATP, which is ATP is the energy currency of, of your cells. So ATP is what you need to create energy. So that is usually how it works. But if you don't eat a lot of carbohydrates and you, your glucose and glycan levels de deplete in your in your body, TCA cannot manage all the acetyl-CoA that is built by your fatty acids. So, and we have an oversupply of uh, acetyl-CoA and an oversupply of fatty acids from the fat reserves. At the same time, the reduction of glucose in your blood also causes a shortage of a lot of other things. One of the things is oxaloacetate. So oxaloacetate is a very important metabolic chemistry in your body. It enhances the insulin pathway. It is very important for brain health. It stimulates mitochondria production in brain cells. It reduces inflammation in brain cells. It has a neuroprotective effect on brain cells. And it also helps the the acetyl-CoA that has been produced by the breakdown of fatty acids to enter into the citric cycle, which is crucial for them to generate energy. So now, the, all this acetyl-CoA that is produced, it has to go somewhere, right? We have like this huge reserve of acetyl-CoA. So that is when your ketosis hap is happening because your acetyl-CoA is diverted into ketone body production, which is a backup production to generate energy if you do not have enough glucose available. So this ketone body production is called ketogenesis. And that is what we're talking about here. And that happens mostly in the liver. So it's very heavy on your liver. And it produces three main ketone bodies. It's a beta hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetic, acid and acetone. So acetone is what you can smell because it's volatile, so you smell that. But actually the main of those three is the beta hydroxybutyrate that is built. Beta HB, for short, is uh, usually uh, transported through through tissues, especially the brain, but also kidney and heart, to keep on going your functions because you glue you low you low on glucose. But your brain, your kidneys, your heart, and even and even some of your muscles, skeletal muscles, they have to still work. That is what we're talking about. So there's a lot going on. And, and interestingly, the liver, which is producing all those ketone bodies, actually cannot use them for energy production because they don't, it lacks the necessary enzymes to do so. Today, you're going to learn the not so obvious things that are keeping you from achieving your weight loss goals. So there is a good consensus that in science that a short-term keto diet will lead to weight loss. But, and that is a very, very big but, there's actually a greater body of knowledge that seems to be very, very unsure what are the actual reasons. Is. Guess what? You might be in a caloric deficit. You might have reduced appetite. We don't really know why this short-term ketogenic diet will work, but what we also know is long-term a ketogenic diet has serious health risk associated with cardiovascular problems and diseases. There's a lot of evidence that a lot of cholesterol will be building up, is be building up if you're a long-term in a ketogenic diet, which means you're gonna have to get off that diet at one point. And what are you gonna do when you get off the diet? You jojo back. And do you think that's good for you? What you need to do is to replace your foods with healthier options that you like. Don't redact, replace. And in my book, I will teach you how to do this. Insulin is at the heart of the problem with slow metabolism. Your body can always lose to that point, but then getting further is a problem. 
the more weight you lose, the more difficult it becomes. Typically, healthy body fat percentages reach anywhere between 10 and 20% for men and between 18 and 30% for women. And if you're in a healthy range of body fat, you might have reached your natural plateau. Where that is depends on your genetics, your age, your gender, your exercise regime, and so many other things. Weight loss is never gradual. The more fat you lose, the more difficult it becomes. For example, this. This has zero sugars. This has zero sugars. This has zero sugars. This has zero sugars. And so does this too starches. It's basically a string of sugars connected together. And because it's so processed, it's going to act not just like sugar, but worse than sugar on the glycemic index. So it's going to spike your sugar a lot higher, and it's going to cause even more weight gain than something like sugar cane. Sugar cane itself on the glycemic index is, I think, like 74 or 75. The starches in junk food go above 100. Guys, the glycemic index cannot go above 100. 100 is the top. The glycemic index ranges from 0 to 100. Glucose is 100. The starches in this junk food, he's right, they have a very high glycemic index, usually somewhere between 70 and 95, which is pretty high, but over 100? And maltodextrin can go up to 185. Okay, guy, maltodextrin has 95, which is very high. I did not expect this to go that bad. This is bullshit. So even though it's not called a sugar, we're just going to call it sugar because it acts like a sugar. Well, it is, it's starch. So yeah, of course it acts like sugar. It's starch. Even a piece of bread, for example, can bump you out of fat burning for a lot longer than you might think because it takes some time to get into ketosis. It could take 24 to 48 hours. Let's say, for example, you're in ketosis and then you drink a glass of wine. The next night you have a piece of bread. You're just not going to be in ketosis. Okay, so we already established that we really don't know the mechanisms behind the ketogenetic diet. So this, he assumes that it is the fat burning part. I think there's not a lot of evidence for this. I think the evidence shows more that you're actually in a calorie deficit and the fat burning part might be a small amount, but the largest amount is really your uh, caloric deficit. And guys, you know, if you don't eat bread for like one or an entire month, but you eat like 5,000 calories of fat every day, you're not gonna, you're not gonna lose weight. You're gonna gain weight, you know? The bread is not what's kicking you out of your weight loss journey. It's, it's, it's the food. It's like the, it's the calories that you eat that's kicking you out from your weight loss journey. Why? Because it takes you a lot longer to get into ketosis. It's very easy to bump you out, but it takes longer to get you in because the body is adapting and that takes some time. So intermittent fasting and ketogenetic diet work short term. No questions asked. I know they work. But the reason I don't recommend those and the reason I write a book about gradually placing your diet rather than going on to like a very harsh for your body, very harsh uh, shift like a ketogenetic diet or intermittent fasting is because first of all, they all have the potential to for you to gain weight back once you get off those those like very harsh regimes. But the main reason you were overweight is because you had a shitty diet to begin with. And then the second reason, more important, is that both of those, ketogenetic diet and intermittent fasting, have been shown in research that they have, that they increase serious risks for serious diseases later on if you do this long term. Most people have too much body fat, they want to reduce their body fat, not to like 10% or 15%, they want to reduce it to, a, to an amount that they feel comfortable with and that is healthy for them. And that is what we're proposing in our new book. Subscribe to my channel, I'm providing science-based, non-BS, I lost weight myself, I'm a former athlete, I'm a professor, I have a research PhD degree. i see you next time, I'm out, see you then.